I mean, it's literally, I can't lift my head more than that. I pulled a muscle in my neck, and it means that I have to either lean back or I have to sort of lean forward like that, like very sort of informative. Oh, yeah? Hey there. James, welcome back to Amuse Bush. As you saw at the beginning, I've pulled a muscle in my neck and it's killing me. So I'm going to look very robotic here. It's going to be quite a quick intro. But today we're making cannoli. One of Ruth's favourites. One of Ruth's favourites. I've actually never made them before. So it's a journey for all of us. We're going to be making obviously the pastry for the cannoli. We're going to be deep frying that. That lovely sort of slightly chocolatey, slightly cinnamony pastry. We're going to be filling it with some ricotta and some mascarpone, sweetened with some icing sugar. We're gonna be dipping the cannoli in some chocolate to decorate the ends. I, put, I like cannoli, I'm a big fan. There's a restaurant in Tower Bridge called Legare, and they do some of the best cannoli I've ever eaten. So we're gonna try and recreate some cannoli. Hopefully it should be quite a straightforward recipe for you guys. Hopefully it'll work, fingers crossed. What a great little Italian start to September. Let's get to it. Let's get things started with some prep for our filling. All you're gonna need to do is dump your 250 grams of ricotta cheese into a sieve above a bowl and get it in the fridge. What we wanna do is try and get as much water out of the cheese as possible. So leave it in the fridge for a couple of hours just to drain off. Next up is the dough. Into a sieve, above a bowl, goes 250 grams of plain flour, 150 grams of icing sugar, two teaspoons of cocoa powder, give it a little chocolatey kick, a kick I would gladly take all day long, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a teaspoon of espresso powder. Now, before we move on, quick little side note here. Day one, I put a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda in the mix because a recipe told me to. Naming no names, but it was... BBC Good Food, and as soon as they hit the oil, this happened. No. Don't think that's meant to happen, is it? That's mental. So needless to say, don't put the bicarb in the mixture because it's gonna cause a reaction when it heats up and the dough's gonna inflate like a blow up doll during lockdown. Anyway, back to the recipe. Sieve all your dry ingredients into a bowl and then we're gonna add two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Start to work the flour and butter between your fingers until it becomes the same texture as wet sand. Then to this, we're gonna add 60 milliliters of white wine and an egg. Then, like our pasta episode, I'll try and find a link for the pasta episode somewhere, we're going to start mixing the wet stuff in a little well and incorporate the dry stuff slowly until you bring it all together into a dough. When it comes together, turn it out onto a floured surface and you guessed it, we're going to knead that bad boy to high heaven. We want it to become soft and supple and a little bit like Play-Doh. Once you've kneaded it for about five minutes, wrap it up in some cling film or saran wrap, if you're American, and get it in the fridge for at least an hour but also overnight will be fine. While we wait for our dough to chill, let's get on with our creamy filling. Into the bowl goes our ricotta, which has been draining off. Truth be told, not a lot of liquid came off my ricotta, but you know, every little helps. Get a fresh bowl and use a whisk to whip it up a little. Next up, into the mix goes two tablespoons of mascarpone to help with the creaminess. Keep whipping it up. Then we're going in with 125 grams of icing sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla paste. Keep whipping it, whip, whip, whip it up. Then we're gonna put the filling into a piping bag to help things later. We're gonna go with a classic amuse-bouche method, bag in a glass and use it as a stand. Once it's all in the bag, it can live in the fridge. Now after the dough is chilled, we can get our cannoli out and get it ready for the fryer. First of all, roll out the disc to about a sixteenth of an inch. Now, I didn't measure it, sure. All I'll say is just try and go as thin as you can. Really, really try and roll it out thin. Then once that's rolled out, we're gonna grease up our cannoli molds. I hate to tell you this, but you need cannoli molds. If you haven't got cannoli molds, this just ain't gonna work. Use a little bit of plain oil to get them well lubed up. Then I'm using a small bowl to cut the circles out. You know, if you've got a four inch biscuit cutter, then use it. Sadly, I haven't. 
deprived. I'm deprived of biscuit cutter. Once you've got all your discs, what you're going to do is take a disc and wrap it around the metal cylinder. Then we're going to use a little bit of egg wash just to help bind those two little sides together. Uh, if you turn the ends back slightly, it'll give it that classic sort of open-ended cannoli look. Makes it look all pretty. Over to the stove we go to deep fry our little babies. Not a sentence that I say very often. As you saw earlier, this might be a little bit trial and error, but make sure you've got your vegetable oil to about 190 degrees Celsius. Very hot little ones. Okay, be careful you little tootsies. Is tootsies fingers or feet? Don't put your feet in it, that'd be mental. Give them about three minutes in their little hot tub. Move them about every now and again because you don't want them to stick to the bottom. And when they've browned a little and there's a few bubbles on the surface of the pastry, they should be done. Get them out on a wire rack over a baking tray to drain off. Once they've cooled off slightly, and don't do it just as they've come out of the oil or you're going to burn your equal hands. Actually, you know what? If you're the sort of person that goes, do you know what? I'm just going to grab this cannoli straight out of the oil. You deserve to burn your hands. But once they've cooled slightly, you can remove the metal mould. Squeeze it slightly and give it a twist and they should just pop straight out. Dip the cooled cannoli ends into some melted chocolate. It just makes it look sexy, okay? I'm not, it's not like I'm addicted to chocolate or anything. <laughs> you are. <clears throat> Once all done and the chocolate is set, we can fill them up. Snip off the end of the piping bag. Oh, look, there's a little hand of a cleaning fairy there, otherwise known as Ruth. Put the end of the piping bag into the middle of the shell and give it a little gentle squeeze to push your filling in. What I like to do is like do little circles on your way out just to make sure that you're fully filling the shell all the way around. Do this on both sides and you'll fill it up. Make sure all your cannoli are piped full of loveliness. And then to finish them off, all we're going to do is dip the ends into some crushed pistachios. Follow this recipe and you should end up with some amazing little Italian pastries. Get in my belly. Cannoli. It's been a two-day process, uh, but we got there in the end. The shells should be nice and crisp. That first batch, obviously, they were exploding. I think it's basically the bicarb. Let's give them a try. Let's see how they taste. Mm. The shell is crunchy. Lovely cream in the middle. A little soft little hint of vanilla in there. Obviously got the garnish of pistachios and chocolate on the end, which are quite nice. They're nice flavors in there. But the actual shell itself, which obviously is the hardest bit to make, tastes really good. You can taste the cinnamon in it. Some really interesting flavors there, actually. I don't know whether it is that put using wine as the thing that, to bring all the flour together. It has sort of really got that taste, that sort of I don't want to say vinegary, but like sort of fruity taste to the pastry, if that makes sense. A tartness. Like a tartness. But listen, give these cannoli a go. They might be a bit tricky on your first time round. Make sure you take some pictures of them, post them on Instagram, tag a moose bouche. I'll see you next time.